Hi everyone, my name's Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student or doctorate student specialising in the morphological or anatomical evolution of Laura Card's catfishes which are also known as plecos in the aquarium trade and I have a well, particular interest in fish foods and fish diets and it kind of links with evolution and morphology in many different ways. But today I'm going to talk about ash and fish food and this is one that is probably the most misunderstood and as with many fillers I could do a few videos about different fillers and their um, importance or lack of importance in the fish diet but ash is probably one of the ones that might seem or have the most um, myths about it maybe just because of what it is. Ash the burnt uh, or is it burnt remains really? But remains of different resources sounds a strange thing to add to fish food or any pet food or food in general. It's often listed as, as a filler and doesn't sound appropriate, but is it? You might not just find it in fish feeds, but as I say, a variety of other sources for pet food, such as dog foods, I think, and this is for um, a particular wide variety of reasons. Ash though is very different to what you think of as ash. Ash in the pet trade and fish nutrition, pet nutrition, refers to remains after material, e.g. fishes, plants, insects, um, have been heated enough to remove all the um, moisture, but also particularly like any um, breakdown, any proteins, any uh, fibre. So this removes anything, I guess, anything organic that can be burnt away. So generally just leaving minerals and a whole multitude of different minerals at that and that's why it's so important in many fish feeds or the use of it. These minerals are essential not just to life itself but other biological functions within the fish um, and the minerals are many different um, generally uh, compounds or elements that are just well, useful minerals such as calcium, magnesium, phosphorus are all provided by this resource, also like manganese, stuff like that. They have many different resources within uh, the biological function. Calcium, for example, is important with, uh, for bone growth, bone um, healing, and also muscular and nervous functions. There's also, I believe, uh, magnesium as an interaction there, as you might know if you keep uh, reptiles about the importance of calcium, but calcium in all organisms, particularly when it comes to bones and growth. Different sources of ash will provide different mineral ratios and contents that are certainly worth considering. There's also another aspect of ratio, so whether there is a ca the calcium to phosphorus ratio, whether this is appropriate, which will dictate and affect uptake and processing by different fishes. And this is very particular depending on the type of fish. Obviously there's not many studies on the fishes we keep particularly in the aquarium trade, but there is towards more aquaculture. So, although fish feeds don't generally list the actual source of the ash, so they don't, won't say this is from insect origin, this is from plant origin, this is from fish origin generally. And the dependence and use of ash really varies depending on the fish and also what you're actually providing else. the duck. Different fishes are shown to benefit from using ash and others are shown not to have any effect, particularly from using ash in comparison to actually um, using it or not. Um, as long as those minerals are actually catered for elsewhere. So there's no point not providing the ash and not actually catering for those minerals elsewhere. And that's, I think, a really important thing to consider if you're looking at uh, frozen or live feeding fish. Anything that you can't provide that wide diversity of ingredients that you can with a, a branded, I guess, to a degree, um, fish food, such a, a gel diet or a, um, a, a, well, or a dry diet or paste diet, anything like that. So there is definitely an importance in those, even though they might not, there's a long way to go. And I do criticise them probably quite a lot. 
So in a lot of diets or some diets, not even all, well not even all brands or products even contain ash, but it might be vital for that product to actually contain those essential minerals that are not included in the ingredients otherwise. And does that make that diet any worse or better than another diet is a whole argument you could put forward it's set um, elsewhere, especially if an, a brand doesn't contain as many ingredients. Are they catering for the wide range of minerals and vitamin or well, minerals that are required um, when they're not providing any other source of it? And how are they providing that source? Is it as accessible? So take for um, I've mentioned it before, phosphorus and calcium. If a fish isn't adapted for eating that source of phosphorus or calcium, if they're not adapted for eating extracting nutrients from that particular resource they won't actually be able to access as many of the minerals from it so take um, those that are insectivores they're unlikely to be able to access the phosphorus and calcium from fish um, fish uh, resources fish bones as well as other ones and that might be where ash is more useful because it does bring it down to the more raw ingredients opposed to if you were using the um, sort of whole things that are going to be a little bit more difficult to extract. But then there is also an aspect of are you providing too much and too little, which maybe needs a lot more research, especially when it comes to a particular, well, the different fishes we keep. So at the end of this, really, a lot of people um, sort of hate on fillers, and there's a lot more to it than that simple, their filler. They're not always a filler, they might have a use. So the word filler, even diets that say they have no fillers might actually, if you look at the ingredients, contain fillers or things that aren't actually digestible by the fish they're marketed at or very few fish. So is ash of no benefit? Definitely not. And is it a filler? And that describes or depends on how you actually describe a filler. It is not something to disregard as an ingredient though, and likely due to its source, it could have a wider range of different minerals opposed to maybe traditional supplements if you're going to provide the raw individual ingredients rather than ash as a whole or the whole ingredient as a whole. And really looking at that accessibility depends on the type of fish. So definitely when it comes to those sort of maybe whole ingredients, um, fish, insects, um, uh, algae, well, their accessibility is going to depend on what's actually going to be feeding on them, um, whether they can access that wide diversity of different minerals. Anyway, I think this is a shorter video than normal, um, there's not much more to say about it. I've got a load of different uh, references and you can research the topic. Most of the um, papers are looking at um, accessing ash from fishes it seems or using ash content as um, to look at how many minerals different fishes um, contain after different diets so maybe they some of the times look at the papers can be a little bit confusing but anyway uh, thank you for watching um, if you've got any questions please ask um, uh, the, and thank you for watching please like my videos subscribe comment whatever and thank you